Hello everyone, my name is Simon Danisch and I want to show you Jill Visualize today. It's a library for UI, graphics and plotting written in Julia and OpenGL. I will walk you through a lot of examples. I wrote a little UI for running the tests of Jill Visualize. So if you run this command in Julia after you have added Jill Visualize, you will get this um, window here. Um, you see you have a few buttons here so you can play some animations. Some examples don't have any animations so this won't do anything but if they do you can use them. You can jump forward and backward between examples and you can fast forward and fast backward. Um, another thing you can do is you can look at the code of each example. Since I only want to enjoy the fun part today for GeoVisualize, I won't actually go into any details here. I will just walk you through all the examples. And another thing I want to show you that you can do is you can actually go into an example file and change the source code and reload the example and we'll see the changes. For example, let me add a color to the cat model. Like this, for example, save it and reload the example. And here you go, you have a new color. So you can do this with all the examples. Okay, let's jump into the other examples. So this is one of the first introductory examples showing you how to set up different screens with different background colors and visualizing some simple objects in it like text and a 3D bar plot. Nothing really special about it, but setting up screens is a very essential part visualize. The next one um, shows the plots.jl integration. So I've written a backend for plots.jl in GL Visualize. So you can write plots with plots.jl and then plot it with GL Visualize basically. Here's another one which demonstrates all the different marker shapes and line types you can use with GeoVisualize and the plots um, package. So you can see you can use Unicode, you can use images as marker shapes, you can actually even use 3D models as marker shapes. That's a pretty unique thing about the GeoVisualize backend. And the next example demonstrates how to mix between pure GeoVisualize code and add um, plots code to it, which is fairly essential since plots.jl and GeoVisualize both have a downside still. So for example, animating and creating interactive GeoVisualize visualizations is not that easily possible via the plots API. So you won't be able to do that. And on the other side, with GeoVisualize, you can't easily create these beautiful graphics. So this example walks you through this, how you can combine them. This is also a basic example of how to set up a camera. This screen here shows the whole scene and this visualizes basically a camera that you can create. It's on this position on this path. It looks at the cat and it's animated on this path. And as you can see, you see on the left screen, you see through this camera basically. So this, this is also a pretty essential example. 
This one is a very simple one demonstrating the widgets you can create in GeoVisualize. So you can change colors of your plots and your visualizations. Um, another one is for image processing with the great images.jl library. Um, it's fairly easy and straightforward to use together. And I want to create more examples like this with a little bit with a more complex image processing pipeline because this will be um, GeoVisualize should be very efficient for visualizing large image processing pipelines. This is another example with a more complex UI. So you have multiple widget types here. These are also sliders that you can slide over and you can change the parameter of the function that is visualized here. You may be recognizing it. It's also the Lorentz attractor. And you can change the color of the, the starting and end points of the color map pretty much. And you can even change the particle primitive of this visualization. The next example is inspired by some great blog posts I found recently. It's about the Koch snowflake and how rich the parameter space is if you actually change a few parameters. So you can get a lot of different fractals which made me really want to explore this parameter space and as you can see I've set up a few more complex widgets here to explore this interactively and if you rev up the iterations you can see how this actually changes which is fairly fascinating it re reminds me a lot of molecules how they get in very complex shapes even though the underlying atoms are pretty simple and redundant yes but this is also a great example if you're looking into making a more complex UI then this could be a starting point This is also a fun um, project, a little Sunday project I made. It's for drawing mandalas with some symmetries. It's really addictive, so I have to warn you. <laughs> yeah, let's let's skip over it. But it shows that you can draw with GeoVisualize, which I think is a pretty interesting thing for a plotting library and I'm surprised that not all plotting libraries offers this because a lot of times you actually want to draw into plots and want to emphasize certain aspect of your plot and probably for the first sketch this is not done programmatically in the easiest way but it's done by just drawing on it so you can do that with GeoVisualize this is a graph plotted with plots.jl you can grab that in GeoVisualize and then pretty much draw on it. The next example is a little graph editing example. It's very simple. I didn't want to waste too much time on it and the graph is random but I hope it shows you a little bit um, where things could go in the future and I hope that the graph editing capabilities and visualization capabilities will grow lots in the future. This is a little game. I took this from the Elm examples. Um, yeah, it just shows you how to hook up the keyboard to actually um, steer this little Mario guy and then animate him. 
Um, this is just an example demonstrating the text rendering and how you can animate all aspects of the text. And yeah, it's pretty flexible. It's just also a particle system, basically, the text. And this one is a little particle simulation. Probably doesn't add much information to the others. Other example, but it's really nice to look at. And you probably won't have that in your examples because it's from a, the simulation is from an unpublished library. More examples. So from here on, it's um, the examples are just demonstrating basic visualization types you have in GL Visualize. So they're probably not interesting unless you really exactly need this. This is more of a test for the image IO libraries so that I can see that everything comes out correctly. So everything needs to be green like this. There's another example showing how you can actually run some code on the GPU. So this is um, sampling a parametric function that you can write in OpenGL, C, GLSL it's called, and it will be sampled on a per pixel basis. And you can animate the parameters. This is another fun simulation. Um, it also guides you through a um, basic process in how to work with a REPL interactively. Um, yeah. More line examples, animated lines, 3D lines line segments connecting some points that's basically the stuff you will need for graphs this one is um, using a special feature for lines that have the equal length so you can accelerate that a little bit more so this is a very efficient way to draw a lot of equally length lines this is just showing you how to color meshes yourself and build them up. And that's pretty much the same. Um, this one shows how you can um, show the lines of the mesh, the wireframe basically. More bar plots, animated ones. We can skip through these a little bit. It's pretty cute. This one is another interesting one. So how I draw text is with sign distance fields, which is a technique I'm using. And you can use the same technique to draw whatever vector graphic you want. This is just some, some distance field generated with some function, an animated one, but this is pretty much the same technique I use to draw the text. This is also a very similar technique to what I use for drawing the text, but this time it accesses an image and not a signed distance field. So you can have a lot of particles accessing the same image and then just draw part of an image for each particle. This one is Unicode particle, so you can use Unicode signs for your particle shapes. You can make particles glow. You saw that probably already in the graph example. Bar plots, animated ones. And you can change the rotation of and scale of particles. And you can plot surfaces. This is the Julia set as a surface. And this is also a surface plot, although the XY coordinates are not fixed in this one. 
but they still need to be assumed to be neighbors. There's another animated surface, animated text, and a volume plot. So this one is probably looks a little bit weird, but this is a maximum intensity projection. This means I'm walking through the whole volume for every pixel and only display the highest value it finds in its path, which can be very interesting for certain images. And this is probably more accessible. This is an isosurface volume plot. So you just plot um, values with the same value inside a volume, which will generate a surface. And at the end of the examples or the run test, you will get a nice overview about what has happened with some benchmarks and some pop-ups. <laughs> And when I have a little bit of time, I want to make it work that you can just click on them and go back to that particular example. But this doesn't work right now. And that's for it for the run test. Um, thank you very much.